Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Denny. Today I'll be talking about all the bags that I took on travel. I've been able to travel to a few places. If you've missed some of my travel vlogs, I went to Japan as well as Malaysia and very recently Tasmania as well. If you enjoy watching vlogs, I've linked them in the description box below. From memory, this video was requested a while ago by Chris. I'm really sorry for being so late to this video. Thank you so much for waiting. In terms of how I pick a bag for travel, it has to be a bag that allows me to actually enjoy the travel. They have to be fuss-free and stress-free. They have to be easy for me to get in and out of, at the same time being secure. They must be replaceable. So not an extinct bag that I took some years to hunt down and to find at a very good price. So definitely not my Birkin 25 and not my Chanel Square Mini in caviar leather. So not these two bags. And when I say replaceable, they also need to be at a reasonable price point. So I must be able to purchase them back again if I lost them. They also have to have a degree of versatility. So being able to transition from day to nighttime. And preferably, I don't want to be a target painted on my back when I'm wearing this bag. And the very last thing, it has to fit everything that I want to carry. The first bag I'm going to show you is not a luxury bag and I've not talked about her on my channel before, but here she is. This is a bag from Gorman. I can't even remember the official name of this bag, but she is my absolute favorite bag for travel. I only purchased her towards the end of last year, but only used her for travel recently because I only recently got to travel. So I have used her not during travel, just for day to day. And I find her really comfortable. Obviously she's made of nylon, so super squishable and she'll mold to your body as well. She comes with a non-detachable but adjustable crossbody strap and it's got this buckle over here. So it's sort of like universal adjustment in terms of length. The strap itself is made of webbing. She's got all these compartments as well. So there is a main compartment which is a big empty black hole. There is a slip pocket in the main compartment, but I don't use that. She is zippered, so that makes her really secure. There is a front pocket as well. I'll just zip her shut. And there's two side pockets, one over there and one on the other side. Zipper pulls are made of these, I don't know, are they laces with like these lace tips as well? But the pink provides a nice accent. As you can see, she comes in this sort of spirally wavy patterns printed on it. To zhuzh her up even more, I went ahead and attached this really cute bag charm that I got from ASOS a long time ago. It's made of like all sequins in a shape of a, um, what's this called? Is it a hornbill? I'm not really sure. But anyway, oh my gosh, this bag, oh, for travel, it is so, so good. I actually bought this bag because I was so tempted by the Longchamp Extra Small La Pliage. It was so big on YouTube. Everyone was talking about it. There was one that they had that was in a similar print to this, the black and white one. I put it on screen, but I was just trying to be good at the time and trying to spend less money on handbags. So I was looking online for, you know, little nylon bags and this was the one that turned up. It was I thought it was so pretty. I actually waited for it to go on sale as well. So I got it for 20% off, a very affordable price. Gorman is a brand that is really popular in Adelaide, Australia. And that's because I think it's actually from Adelaide. A lot of working women do wear Gorman to work. They do have very bright prints and you know, at my workplace it's okay to wear prints, but their dresses and skirts are very practical because they all come with pockets. So Gorman is a really popular brand in Australia, especially if you want to wear something bright to work. With this bag, why is it so awesome? I have to say when I traveled with her, I did have a second bag. So I always carry my daughter's nappy bag. So although it doesn't carry nappies anymore, we still call call it the nappy bag and it's a backpack and I only need a small bag to go with it. Having said that, this holds a ton. It holds so much. Let me show you. In the front pocket, I kept my uh, iPhone 13 mini. So it made it really easy to access. And every time I wanted to reach for it, I could just unzip the front pocket and pull it out without anything else getting caught and flying out of the bag. I carried a second phone as well that went in the main compartment. I can't show you the phone because I'm actually filming on it, but that is a big Samsung Galaxy, but it's a bigger phone than the iPhone mini. My mini pochette, which is full, it's got cash, 
a couple of lippies cards, my key fob, um, a bag hook, some tissues, but it's full and it goes in nice and easy, just like so. And then on top of that card holder, my sunscreen, which is really important to me, hand sanitizer, power bank. <laughs> so like on top of everything that's in here, it still fits the phone that I'm filming on. And I could still also fit my sunglasses on top. I can't show you my sunglasses cause they broke and I'm actually going to buy a new one, but I could zip it up. It's a bag that just keeps on taking. It is so, so awesome. Very lightweight and very easy to carry. These side pockets meant that when I had train tickets, I could stick them in these side pockets as well as my hotel key card. I stuck them in here as well. So I really enjoy using this bag. It's really my number one bag for travel now. And because it's made of nylon, sure, it caught a bit of dirt here and there. It actually got some soy sauce, some curry. When I was on travel, I kind of just rubbed it off with a little bit of soapy water and the stain did come off. Some stains did get on the bottom of the bag, but when I came home, I stuck it in a net and just put it in the washing machine and it came out fine. Um, almost like brand new. So absolutely love this bag. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, hmm. So check them out if you're looking for nice practical bags. This one is my Coach Cassie camera bag and I took it on travel with me to Malaysia because of, uh, if you missed the unboxing video, there was all these glazing that had bled from the flap. There's some glazing that's bled onto the bag in this corner here and the other corner over there. On the back of the bag, same thing. Yeah. If I haven't told you the story already, I ended up getting a full refund for this bag from eBay. And there is a longer story to that. If you want to know all the details, go ahead and watch the unboxing as well as the follow-up video. I'll link them in the description box below. Eventually, I kind of made some money off this bag because uh, one of my viewers offered to purchase the strap from me. And I sold that to her for about 43 to 45 Australian dollars. So I actually made some money off this bag, which is great. I deliberately took this to travel when I went to Malaysia because I knew that, you know, potentially I could go and explore some restorers there. I did take them to a restorer, but they discouraged me to do anything to that because they're saying, well, you know, potentially we could paint it because they were skilled at painting leather, but they said because it's coated canvas, the paint may not last at all. It might just chip off. So they discouraged me against doing that. Um, so that's why the bag still looks like this, but I did take this for travel. I think she is a really good bag for the airport because of all the compartments. This bag is really awesome because my phone fits into that slip pocket right here. And ta-da, that's where it is. It is really tucked in there and very secure and certainly very accessible as well. And while the phone was resting over there, I could put in this front pocket, my passport as well as my boarding pass. So this as an airport bag was so convenient. For all the other essentials that I needed, they fit in here, including like my second phone for filming, my power bank, my sunscreen, and so on and so forth. This even fits a small water bottle lengthwise. Although I wouldn't necessarily recommend you doing that when you get on a plane because the air will decompress and the water will just come out and spill into your bag and onto the contents of the bag. So although if it's a water bottle, don't take the water bottle on the plane. So I say this specifically that this is a good airport bag as opposed to it being a good bag in general. That's because on the same trip, I actually had both of these bags with me. When I took this on the airport, I felt like it was fine because literally at the airport, there are so many areas where you can rest your bag and yourself. You kind of get there really early and you're there for you know at the airport for maybe three four hours you're doing a little bit of walking you're sitting down you're putting the bag down you might have a meal or a drink and most of the time the bag you know is resting somewhere you can place it down somewhere on one of the days when i was in japan i did try to carry this bag all day and i felt myself wishing i had switched over to this bag over here on that day we were going from 
Tokyo to Osaka, catching the bullet train, that's right. So we had to lug our suitcases to the train station and then take the bullet train, subsequently lug our suitcases from the train station to the hotel. And on that day, I decided, oh, well, this was great at the airport. Since I'm doing like a transition between cities and catching a bullet train, why don't I carry this bag again? And I remember feeling like this bag was so, so heavy because I guess it was a longer day and I didn't have as many places to set the bag down. As soon as I got to the hotel in Osaka, I switched out of this bag and went into this one and never changed out of this bag for the rest of the trip in Japan. So this bag is good for organization and I think good for the airport, but for very, very long days where you can't put it down, it's, it's not that comfortable. <laughs> the next bag that I took on travel this year is this one over here. It's from Parissa Wang. Let me just grab her out of the dust bag. And if you watch my unboxing of this bag, you'll know which bag this is because I only have one bag from Parissa Wang. And here she is. She is, she's very beautiful. And she smells really, really good. This is the Parissa Wang Unlocked Shoulder Bag. I believe that's what it is called. It is a flat bag. And that's what she looks like in front, the side, the back. She does have a slip pocket back there. That's the Parisa Wang logo in gold hardware over there and on the other side there's no feet at the bottom. She comes in this really pretty fishbone. fishbone. I love these quilts. It is in this herringbone pattern and it's so unique. I've not seen any other bag that has this pattern just yet and I purchased her to fill my puffy quilted bag void. So, and I think she is very beautiful. There was a little bit of drama when I purchased this bag. Anyway, I will leave that video in the description box below if you're interested in hearing the drama. If you're interested in purchasing from Parissa Wang, definitely watch that video because uh, yeah, there were some hiccups. In the end, do I love the bag? I absolutely love the bag. So let me show you the opening. These that you see here, these straps and this thing over here, uh, that's just ornamental. There is a push button down the bottom here. And you push on that and it releases the bag. Um, on the inside, that's what she looks like. There's one compartment, a slip compartment at the front and a zipper pocket at the back. And oh, she smells so good. This is in Napa leather. And that was the other reason why I wanted to try this bag as well, because I wanted to try a Napa leather bag without having to pay Fendi prices. On the lock over here, it does say Prisa Wang Paris. The leather is very beautiful, very beautiful and very soft. There are four grommets at the top of the bag and here's the strap. It is mostly chain and there is a leather insert over here. You can double her up to carry her as a shoulder bag as well as single the chain down for it to be a long shoulder bag. This bag I took on travel because she's fairly lightweight. Uh, Napa leather generally is fairly lightweight so I could pack her in my suitcase with my luggage no problem and if she went missing, I wouldn't be so heartbroken. She was also really good as a day bag. She fits all my essentials. She's very secure. So if I held it by the this thing or, or the flap over here, it doesn't open up. White bags always look so elevated. So I love the look of that. And she looks really elegant, doesn't she? I can easily take her from day to night, no problems whatsoever. I'll be honest, I really like the look of Prissa Wang bags. So there is the one that looks like the Kelly that they always promote. I think that bag looks so pretty and I like that they are offering it in Togo leather. And if you're not familiar, Togo leather is very popular with Hermes bags. And I tend to like Togo leather because it's meant to be very durable. It weighs a little bit more. So I'm curious to try out more bags from Prisa Wang. But given, you know, the average service that I got when I purchased this bag, I'm just holding off for the moment. But this bag I really did enjoy carrying because she's very soft, very comfy, lightweight and carried everything and also secure and replaceable if I lost her. <laughs> well hello, in this portion of the video I come to you from beautiful Hobart, Tasmania. I'm currently on a work trip and uh, I thought it would be really apt to film this portion of the video here. I have a bit of time before my meeting starts. I'm usually an early riser so I thought I would film this portion of the video right now. If you like travel vlogs I also did vlog this trip so if you're interested in watching I've linked that video in the description box below. And yes I do have my own video playing in the background. Um, I kind of put it on to check what they look like on TV because I haven't got time to do it at home. You just got a sneak peek of which bag I was going to show you. In any case, um, 
yeah, I just felt like it would be a good bit of distraction in the background because it creates a bit of movement. And because it's my own videos, I'm not going to get copyright striked. So here we are. So the bag that I brought on this trip is this one over here. Oh, she's so beautiful. Now, this is not an Hermes bag, but it is a bag inspired by Hermes. So it is inspired by the Hermes Kelly Pochette. And have a look at her. She's so pretty. She comes in this sort of creamy white colour with uh, gold hardware. I'll just put her back together and present her again. Okay, so that's her, all prim and proper. So if you're familiar with the Hermes Kelly, it is a similar sort of layout or similar design, but this is the pochette design. It is a mini bag. It's got the turn lock, the sangles, the flap. With the Kellys, usually they have a big top handle, so the mini Kellys are like that as well. They have the big structured top handle that stands up. The Kelly Pochette though has a flat handle just like this one over here so just like the Pochette Matisse from Louis Vuitton so you can pull it out when you need it and when you don't need it you can push it back down. So that's the front of the bag and then the side and then the back and the other side and the bottom has no feet. Now I don't know whether the authentic Hermes Kelly Pochette has feet or not but this one here does not have feet. So to open up you turn the turn lock, you pull out the sangles and then so that's what it looks like. This one doesn't say Hermes anywhere on this bag. On the inside, that's what it looks like. So it's a big compartment with a slip pocket on the back. Now the authentic Hermes Kelly Pochette, they don't have these thingos to run this strap through. And the original Kelly Pochette does not come with a strap. This bag I purchased off handbagsresort.com. <laughs> <laughs> but they're now called Millie bags and I do think that the quality of this bag is absolutely amazing. Amazing. This strap that they provide is fully detachable and adjustable. It has one, two, three, four, five, six length settings and I kind of run it through the little thing always over here and it's got two strap keepers so one strap keeper over there and one strap keeper over there now this strap keeper over here is actually really really loose and that's why i have a hair tie over here i know it doesn't look particularly elegant but if i want to hide it i kind of stuff stuff it underneath the strap keeper and then it's hidden in terms of the glazing it's this sort of brown glazing I think it complements this bag really well. In terms of designer inspired bags, I do think there is a time and place for it. I I don't really like bringing very expensive luxury handbags with me when I travel. This bag would be about 10,000 Australian dollars or even higher. And on the pre-loved market, it's even more expensive. In terms of the authentic Hermes Kelly, the regular Kellys, the Kelly 25s, the Kelly 28s, they are so hard to get from the store in itself. So their prices are really, really high on the pre-loved market or on the reseller's market. And then the next bag that is even harder to get is the Mini Kelly. And the one that's even harder to get is the Kelly Pochette. So this bag is awfully difficult to get. And if you get it on a resale market, again, it's going to cost a lot. And this one here is in a neutral color as well. So how much did I pay for this? I think it was about 250 Australian dollars. So obviously a very conservative price compared to the original. And I can enjoy this bag so much because it is not uber expensive and it is also replaceable. So if something was to happen to this bag, um, it wouldn't be an absolute disaster. I'd be upset, but it wouldn't be an absolute disaster. Now, I went ahead for the pochette because Millie Bags does sell the regular Mini Kelly as well, the one with the tall and structured and upright top handle. But I find that that top handle is not that easy to make. Not that I make it myself, but when I observe and look at these uh, mini Kellys, sometimes even the Hermes ones don't look that good. I don't know if the ones that I'm seeing online are maybe not authentic ones and they're super fakes and that's why the top handles look a bit wonky. But um, even ones that come out of Hermes, I don't know, it's probably it's probably really, really hard to make those top handles in the mini size. So I find they look a bit wonky. And similarly, the ones that you see on the mini bags website, they can look a bit wonky as well. That's why I chose to go for the pochette style with a really, you know, little and easy to make top handle. As I said before, I'm here on a work meeting. So um, I'm here for about three nights. And most of what I do in these meetings is I go for like 
courses, there are lectures, and then there's networking dinners. I always have my laptop with me in case I want to take notes or something like that. So when I travel, it means that I do have to bring my laptop and here is my laptop bag, which means that I don't really want to carry a really big um, handbag. So I double bag and this one I carry on my back and it carries like, you know, all things like sunscreen and my sunglasses and stuff like that. So this one I have, which means I don't need such a big bag. And this one is just perfect. If it's on my essentials, I'm able to carry it on the front of my body. There's just someone in the window looking at me, <laughs> filming. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead, commit, right? Commit. <laughs> Put on my thick skin. So um, what's I gonna say? Um, yeah, so it just, you know, I crossbody it, it's in front of me. My essentials are really accessible. My wallet, my phone, my boarding pass are the most important things. And it's really handy for the airport. So I am also staying at the hotel where the meeting is being run, which means that I can very conveniently come back to my room to collect uh, anything that I might need. Most of the time during the meeting, I don't even have to carry this bag. I just leave it in my uh, hotel room. And again, because it's not uber expensive, like I'm not super panicking about it being stolen. Um, and I carry everything that I need in my laptop bag. In the evenings, like once all the workshops and lectures are finished, sometimes we have networking dinners and you know, it's a company might take us out to a restaurant. In which case, this is perfect as well for an evening event, like no problem. The work meeting itself often will run a gala dinner so it's like a semi-formal event or a cocktail style event and again this one becomes so versatile and completely appropriate for an event like that if i want it like a really formal look i can take the strap off usually it's sort of semi-formal and i can keep the strap on no problem and because i do like to dance as well at the meeting um i, I like having the strap on and i don't want to be carrying a super giant bag these gala dinners as well a lot of handbags are actually at risk, I would say, because people do drink and they, you know, get away with themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and handbags, luxury handbags are actually at risk, you know, of drinks being spilt on them. Well, I haven't seen anyone puke yet, but, um, you know, it's a professional dinner, so I haven't seen anyone puke yet. But never say never, you know. So I absolutely love, love, love this bag for travel. It is the perfect second bag that I need when I have a bigger bag. If you're interested, I'll leave it in the description box below. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions about it, I would say that the quality is absolutely impeccable. Look at that stitching. It's in the, I think, Epsom style leather of Hermes. Um, I don't own any Epsom leather from Hermes, but it's this sort of stiff uh, pebbled leather, but the stitching and the craftsmanship is absolutely beautiful. It is not perfect um, because I have uh, my authentic uh, Birkin 25 as well as my Kelly 32. So I can make comparisons with regards to how things line up, how the glazing is done and the stitching and how things are cut and how precisely things are uh, lined up. So it's not exactly like the real thing, but sure, if you're looking at it this closely and you're turning the bag in all different ways, in really good lighting, you can spot those differences. But for me, I'm not really here to say I'm carrying an Hermes bag. I just, I'm just carrying a beautiful bag. <laughs> So those are the bags that I took with me on travel. I tend not to take really large luxury handbags because I find them less versatile. So for example, if I carry like the Louis Vuitton Keep All 40, I wouldn't be using that from day to day and I would have to be leaving that bag at the hotel. That would make me worry a lot when I was out and about. So I feel like carrying such an expensive luxury handbag that I can't take out with me, it's not worth it. It's gonna affect how I enjoy my holiday. But I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Tell me what are your favorite bags to take on holiday or on travel. My vintage Chanel, the rectangular mini in beautiful buttery lambskin with gold plated 24 karat gold plated hardware, that's right, that's what she is. She is just so stunning. I don't 